This video is based on a true story. These stories are based on real life incidents. Please respect the family and friends of individuals featured on this channel. Remember to be courteous in your comments. Many details of these true stories are gory and frightening. If you do not want to hear these types of details, please do not watch this video series. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. This episode, we visit the wilds of the Japanese frontier on the island of Hokkaido. This bear attack story is one of the most gruesome in history and led to several deaths. On the Japanese island of Hokkaido, there is a very large subspecies of brown bear called the Ursuri brown bear, or Ursus arctos lasiotis, also known as the Amur bear. This bear is very large, comparable to every other brown bear species. But, this particular subspecies of brown bear is renowned for its aggressiveness and hostility toward human beings. The problems started arising on the Aikidas family farm in early winter of 1915. The family horse was panicked by a disturbance in the barn, and the family patriarch rushed out to witness a large bear fleeing his barn, having raided the family cache of corn. This area was still very primitive, and animal incursions were not unheard of. A few days later, the big bear reappeared. Being concerned for the horse, Mr. Aikida rounded up some volunteers and decided to chase the bear away for good. The men positioned themselves for a kill shot and fired shots striking the bear. The bear fled and the men went to bed for the night to allow the bear to die. In the morning, they resumed tracking the bear and followed the bloody trail for some time before a snowstorm set in. The bear was headed toward a nearby mountain and the men assumed that that would be the last they heard from him since they had given him plenty of reason to avoid further contact with humans. On December 9th of the same year, the Oda family was enjoying basic farm chores around mid-morning. The family matriarch, Abe Meiyu, was watching an infant named Mikio. They were enjoying the warmth of the fire when the injured and hungry brown bear knocked down the door and growled and pawed at them. The bear backed Meiyu across the room and reached into her arms and bit the head of the baby, killing her instantly. Mayu fought with all of her might, throwing firewood and just about anything else she could get her hands on at the beast. She was obviously no match for the giant brown bear, as it simply knocked her down and tore her to pieces in her own home. Mayu was dragged from the house into the nearby forest. It was reported that the floor of the home was covered in her blood. A 30-man search party was organized on the following day. They had no sooner entered the forest before running into the brown bear. The bear was clearly guarding a food cache from them. Five of the volunteers fired at the giant before the bear could be driven from the scene. The men found Mayu's remains. All that was left of her was her head and portions of her lower body. The bear had consumed the rest of her corpse overnight. Amongst the villagers, the obvious concern was that the bear would now think of people as a food source. They mustered a hunting party of 50 farmers to rid their village of this bear once and for all. The rallying point was the Oda farmhouse. The bear appeared as expected at around 8 p.m., but the hunting party was in such disarray that only a single shot was fired before the bear escaped. The party immediately left the neighboring Miyuki homestead and started following the bear tracks downstream in the dark of night. The Miyuki matriarch, Yayo, was preparing a meal while the village men were chasing the bear. She held her son, Umakichi, in her arms while she worked. Yayo was startled by a noise outside, and before she could check it out, the giant brown bear crashed through a window and into her house. As chaos ensued in the home, the contents of the meal she was preparing spilled onto the fire, extinguishing it, and the oil lamp for lighting was put out as well. The house was dark, and Yeyo's sons were seeking her protection. She tripped over them in the confusion. The bear immediately began biting and clawing Yeyo and her son. Odo was the only man who was left at the Miyoki home to protect them. Odo burst into the room, and the bear immediately redirected its rage at him. This allowed Yeyo and her sons to be the hasty escape. Odo hid behind furniture, but the bear raked him with his claws. Others in the house were not so lucky. The Sato family was seeking shelter with Yeyo and her children. The bear killed the fourth Sato boy and bit his older brother. During this frenzied attack, the bear also mauled and killed the third oldest son of the Miyuki clan, Kinzo. The Sato family matriarch, Take, was with child. She begged the bear to kill her but leave her baby unharmed. The bear killed and ate parts of her but left her baby. 
which was later pulled from her womb alive, but died shortly after. Meanwhile, the hunting party thought they were following the bear tracks downstream and discovered they had not followed the right bear. They ran into Yeo, who was severely injured, as they returned, and she advised them of the attack. The men quickly surrounded the Miyuki house and could hear the bear attacking the occupants inside the dark home. They decided to burn the building with the bear inside, but Yeo talked them out of it, as there may be survivors inside. Ten of the men posted up at the front door, and the remaining men went around to the back of the home. The men at the back of the house decided to drive the bear out of the front of the home by making a bunch of noise. The clatter scared the bear out of the front door into the crowd of men posted up there. These men were all lined up, though, and could not shoot for fear of hitting the men in front of them. The man in the front of the line tried to shoot, but his rifle misfired. In this confusion, the bear fled right through the mob and into the night without being hit by a single bullet. The men entered the home by birch bark torchlight and beheld the gruesome scene inside. Two of the children were injured, but lived. The death toll now stood at six people, including the pregnant Miss Sato. The village gathered at the nearby school and triaged people at the Suchi farm. Mr. Sato, still unaware of the devastation wrought on his family, had found lodging at a nearby hotel for the night. Upon returning to Senkabitsu, he joined the hunting party to find the bear. They waited into the night at the Miyuki homestead, but the bear never showed back up. On December December 12th, local authorities organized a rifle team to dispatch the man-killer. The group immediately departed for Senkabetsu. The party resolved to find and kill this bear immediately. The team decided to try to bait the bear into shooting distance with the corpse of one of the victims over the objections of the victim's families. The plan appeared to be working as the bear did peek into the house, now occupied by the rifle team, but quickly fled the scene back to the forest. The plan was a miserable failure and only further traumatized the victim's families. Mr. Miyuki consulted a local bear hunter, Mr. Yamamoto, to recruit his help. The woodsman declined due to selling his firearm for money to buy alcohol. Mr. Yamamoto indicated that he believed it was the same bear that had killed three women in the previous incident. He deduced this because the bear had a hallmark that would mark its victims with a diagonal slash from the shoulder, or a kesagaki, as the bear would be dubbed. On December 13th, the party discovered the ransacked Ota family home. The family's winter stores of food had been devoured and the bear tore up eight neighboring homes, but remained a ghost in the forest. The men noticed the bear was spreading his reign of terror downstream and set up a defensive barricade. Standing guard all night, one of the guards noticed a shadow across the river, and to avoid shooting a human, he spoke to it. When he received no response, the men opened fire and the shadow melted back into the forest. In the morning, a squad of men investigated the site where the shadow was seen. They observed giant bear tracks and blood in the snow. They knew they had wounded Kesakake once again. In an attempt to beat another prevailing snowstorm, the men started tracking the bear at once. The bear hunter, Mr. Yamamoto, tracked the bear down and crept within about 60 feet of the sleeping man killer. He fired his rifle two times and his bullet struck the giant in the heart and in the head. The terror and violence was finally ended. A necropsy was performed on Kezagaki's carcass. The bear stood 8 feet 9 inches in height and weighed 749 pounds. Tissue from his victims was pulled from his stomach, and his skull and skin were kept as artifacts to the event. The artifacts were eventually lost, and not a trace of Kezagaki remains. As a result of the attack, some of the survivors died from their wounds, and eventually the town was abandoned. Experts believe Kezagaki woke from hibernation due to lack of food. It is believed that human settlement affected the bear's natural source of food.